a virtual machine lets you run another operating system inside an operating system. I'm going to run CentOS 8.1 and use it as a build server. I have configured this CentOS environment for SSH access from the desktop environment. That way I can send files back and forth between the desktop environment and the server. Red Hat is the organization that sponsors CentOS and has published systems management documentation that applies to both Red Hat Enterprise Linux and CentOS. A document titled Securing Networks has a chapter on setting up and interacting with SSH. SSH stands for Secure Shell. It is the mechanism of choice for moving files back and forth between the local desktop and the build server. The documentation describes how to check for SSH and here I will query the status of the SSH service. A system called SystemD has a tool called System Control, spelled S Y S T E M C T L. And System Control lets you inquire into the status of different services. And SSH is one of the services that you can inquire into the status will show that the SSH service is up and running. A major benefit of using SSH is it speeds up use of the server and provides excellent process isolation. We want to separate development from the local desktop and SSH allows us to do that. And there are several benefits to separating the local desktop from the actual uh, build of software. That will be discussed later on. Virtual Machine Manager is a user interface, a GUI, that lets us see the state of a virtual machine and allows us to log into the virtual machine like we have done using a GUI so we can see the visual desktop environment if one exists. However, using Virtual Machine Manager for software development will slow us down and therefore SSH will speed us up. A downside of SSH is that when you first access a server using an SSH enabled account, you have to enter a username and password each time. We will fix that in a moment, but first let's log in to the server for the first time through this local user account. Here it asks us if we recognize the server and uh, we consent. And the process is very straightforward, no issues getting logged into the server. However, imagine the productivity drain each time you need to push or pull files whenever you need to uh, move data around. And you need a password each time to do that. To fix that, there's a tool called SSH Keygen that is described in the Red Hat documentation. We can generate a security key that SSH can use to tie our local account to a server account. Next, we use SSH copy ID to push the key to the server. After that, our local account is tied to the server account and we can access the build server more conveniently. That is, when we SSH into the server, it will see the local key, confirm it, and it will automatically log us in. Now it's time to test our access 
to an interaction with the build server. We start by opening a pair of command line terminals. One terminal will be logged in as an administrator to start and stop the virtual machine. The second terminal will be our local self accessing the hosted environment. The virtual machine GUI will be in the background and the virtual machine that it's managing is currently turned off. The virtual machine manager is there in the background to confirm our actions visually start and stop the service start and stop the server. The first terminal we're going to switch into a administrative account and use a tool, a command line tool called VIRSH. V-I-R-S-H that stands for Virtual Machine Shell. And through this Virtual Machine Shell we're able to issue commands to a virtual machine, in this case to initiate its startup, sort of like powering on, uh, pressing the power on button on a computer. From the second command line, we're going to log into the build server. Here I've typed the command ARP to give me an indication when the local network bridge has uh, broadcast where the virtual server has broadcast that it's available. So I have logged into the build server and confirmed its host name and I'm going to use the shutdown command to shut it down from inside the virtual server. Next, the administrator will start the virtual machine again. However, the administrator will also shut it down without logging into the virtual machine. In this case, the administrator does not have access inside the virtual machine. The administrator only has the ability to start and stop the virtual machine. And we see using the ARP tool, that stands for Address Resolution Protocol, it shows that there's an IP address and we have shut it down from the administrative account.